In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this celebration of the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is found recorded in the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, beginning at the first verse. <clears throat> and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits at the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica, the second chapter beginning at the first verse. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain. For though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. For our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man but to please God who tests our hearts. For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a great pretext for greed. God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others, though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother, taking care of her own children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. We worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, while we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you, and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. 
And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which it, you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment uh, in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. And he said to them, How is it then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A devotion from the writings of Martin Luther for October 25th, based on the text Ephesians 4, verse 3, which reads, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Christians should feel bound to maintain the unity of the Spirit since they are all members of one body and partakers of the same spiritual blessings. They have the same priceless treasures, one God and Father in heaven, one Lord and Savior, one word, baptism and faith. In short, one and the same salvation, a blessing common to all whereof one has as much as another and cannot obtain more. The unity of the church does not consist in similarity of outward form of government, likeness of law, tradition, and ecclesiastical customs. The church is called one holy Christian church because it represents one plain, pure gospel doctrine and an outward confession thereof always and everywhere, regardless of dissimilarity of physical life or outward ordinances, customs, and ceremonies. But they are not members of the true Church of Christ who, instead of preserving unity of doctrine and oneness of Christian faith, cause divisions and offenses by human doctrines and self-appointed works for which they contend imposing them upon all Christians is necessary. One of the wickedest offenses possible to commit against the church is the stirring up of doctrinal discord and division, a thing the devil encourages to the utmost. This sin usually arises in certain haughty, conceited, self-seeking leaders who desire peculiar distinction for themselves and strive for personal honor and glory. They will give honor to no one, even when they recognize the superiority of his gifts over their own. In their envy and vengefulness, they seek occasion to create factions and to draw people to themselves. Many are deceived and immediately respond to the new doctrine presented in specious words by presumptuous leaders thirsting for fame. Many weak but well-meaning ones fall to doubting. Many become reckless pleasure lovers, disregarding all religion and ignoring the word of God. Even they who are called Christians come to have hard feelings against one another. Their love grows cold and faith is extinguished. 
Christians then should be careful to give no occasion for division or discord. They must strive against them, submitting to all suffering and performing all demands to prevent, so far as possible, any disturbance of the unity of doctrine, of faith, and of spirit. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Having confidence in our justification by grace through faith, and having access to the Father in Jesus' name, let us turn our hearts in prayer on behalf of ourselves, to the Church, and all people according to their needs. O Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you do not desire the death of the sinner, but want all to come to faith and life in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors who will preach your word without fail, and teach the doctrine delivered to the saints, that many may hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation through the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionary serving far and near and the new congregations they establish in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant to Donald, our President, Eric, our Governor, the Congress of these United States, and the Legislature of our State, wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the perfection of life from its, uh, protection of life from its conception to its natural end, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. Hear us on first on behalf of those we name in our hearts before you. According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people and provided resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need. 
help us to provide gainful employment to all people, that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors and honor you with the works of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God and Father, your own Son has set his table among us and gives us his own flesh and blood to be the bread of heaven that feeds us everlasting life and the cup of salvation in which our thirst is satisfied forever. Give to us your Holy Spirit, that we may commune worthily and in repentance and faith feast upon his holy sacrament. Bring us at last to that day when all earthly divisions will cease and we will be one people before the altar of the Lord. Until that day, preserve among us your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the, the prophets, until the day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the gospel, and bless us with the desire to know and keep your word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution, so that they may forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray you, to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul, and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose, and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you have commanded us to love you above all things and our neighbors as ourselves. Grant us the spirit to think and do whatever is pleasing in your sight, that our faith in you may never waver and our love for one another may not falter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.